You're watching Fan Team Daily, a podcast by whoscored.com. Hello and welcome to Fan Team Daily, the fantasy football show that could help you win real money with your football knowledge. On Fan Team Daily, we'll be looking at the record-breaking Euro 2020 fantasy football tournament, which has a minimum guaranteed prize of £1 million and a guaranteed first place prize of £200,000. And it's only 20 quid to enter. Sounds pretty good. I'm joined today by two fantasy sport heavyweights. First up, who scored a very own Jake Gallagher, a self-described fantasy football nut with a top 150 finish to his name on FPL. I mean, that's pretty good, Jake, I have to say. How are you doing? Yeah, good, thanks. Um, really good. It's um, Finally, the sun's come out, so it feels like the Euros is actually going to happen. Um, feels like Euro summer. Uh, England squad was announced today, which was um, again just all eyes towards all eyes towards this 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 summer of football. I think um, now the Champions League final's done, and what a great game that was! Now the final's mm-hmm. done, we can finally just tur- turn our heads towards the Euros and start looking at how we're going to win this prize. I'm ready. I'm so ready for the Euros. I'm so pumped now. Likewise. Yeah. And with us as well is uh, Ben Dinnery, who I'm sure most people already know from fantasy football fame. Uh, how are you doing, Ben? I hear it's not so nice where you are. Uh, well, at this moment, it, it's very nice. Oh, yes. Pleased to meet you guys. <laughs> Great to be here. It, the sun is bleaching at the moment, but I'm in, in between home and holiday. So I actually travel back specifically just for this podcast. So where I'm on holiday, the weather is absolute garbage. Uh, we're stuck <laughs> under a, a thick fog for the last sort of three to four days. But travelling home, five minutes down the road, sun bleaching in, you know, life's good. So, uh, you know, I've got to travel back there tonight. So it's going to be a late one. But hey, ho, you know, this is what we have to do. This is the business we're in. Looking forward to the Euros. Can't wait to get it all kicked off. I mean, I don't know how you've managed to find the only place that hasn't got any sun. I mean, it's it's, it's yeah. pretty impressive. It's very, 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 very emotional. What can I say? Um, <laughs> typical. I take the kids away. You know, with the, the summer holiday abroad cancelled, so we'll go to the caravan. And um, yeah, I think we 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 had a barbecue booked on Sunday. Uh, lasted about fifteen minutes. The hoodies were on, and that was getting piped in. We're back inside the caravan watching television. You know, so rock and roll. You're doing it. You're doing the bank holiday properly. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So, what is Fan Team Daily and what is this show about? Well, Fan Team have a Euro 2020 fantasy football game, uh, as I said, with the guaranteed prize pool of a million pounds, which is just crazy money. Uh, the game is really similar to the Fantasy Premier League, so there's not too much for us to explain in terms of the rules and scoring, although there's a few, uh, a few things that are a bit different and we'll touch on those um, as we do the series. Uh, Jake, do you want to explain what's going on over the next 10 days and what would you do with the first prize of 200 grand? Yeah, incredible. Um, so, Fan Team Daily is a five-part series over over ten days, as you mentioned. We fresh con ev- fresh content every day on Who Scores Twitter page, right here on the YouTube channel and on the Instagram feed too. And this will be right up until the start of the start of the year is on the eleventh of June, right up until when uh, Italy kick off against Turkey. Um, in each episode, we'll be looking at a theme or a topic, and today's topic is is essential picks. Um, later on, we'll be looking at things like differentials and we'll be doing some team reveals. And then also we'll be looking at strategy too, which I know is a big part of this game. So yeah, stick around to the viewers, stick around, subscribe to the YouTube channel, follow who scored on Twitter. And lastly, from me, later on the show, we'll be giving away free entries to fan team Euro games. So keep your eyes and ears peeled um, for that one. And yeah, really looking forward to this. Like I said, sun shining and we're looking for a brilliant summer of football now. Let's get on with it then. I mean, Perfect. today <laughs> today we had big news. We had the uh, England squad announcement. I'm really interested to know what you both think of it. I've got some views. So, yeah, I'll, I'll leave those till the end. But, um, yeah, Ben, what, what do you make of it all? Very much as it were. You know, there's not too many surprises in there. I'm a big fan of James Ward-Prowse. That's probably mm. the biggest disappointment for me. Uh, I think he has, you know, the, the, the skills and the... You know, in that in his toolbox to to unlock defenses, set pieces, which could be, you know, would have been a, a major sort of asset in in tournament football. Where Harry Kane you know, back on corners. <laughs> Let's hope not. <laughs> um, so yeah, but it's good to see Trent. You know that all there had been a lot of talk, a lot of suggestion that Trent wasn't going to be involved. Uh, just how much game time he will actually be given remains to be seen. Mm. You know, I do. I feel as if Gareth. You know, he's not. He's down his pecking order, so maybe that's a little bit of a disappointment because I am a big Trent fan. And contrary to maybe this this media, you know, the feeling that 
yeah, he didn't start the season uh, typically as we normally see Trent, but you know he finished the season so strongly and he was pivotal in, in you know in helping getting Liverpool over the line into that um, Champions League qualification spot. Um, and maybe Ollie Watkins, that's maybe another little mm. d- disappointment. You know he's come off the back of it of another great season. Uh, as of it, he's made that step up from the Championship, that transition with relative ease. So he can maybe feel a little bit aggrieved. I know Jess Lingard, he made a very strong case, oh, no. you know, since he switched from Manchester United. But even just to be considered and even to be included in an initial sort of get together, I think is testament to his football. But ultimately, I think that's a right decision. The only concern for me is, you know, being the injury guy, as it were, <laughs> you know, we're taking a little bit of a gamble on Harry Maguire. I think Jordan Henderson. You know, we're, we're going to have players who have very little competitive football maybe going into the tournament. And also, let's not forget Declan Rice as well. He just come at the latter mm. part of the season. So it's not only, you know, being able to, to reach that level of performance, but it's then it's being able to consistently string that together game after game is what you're going to need in tournament football. You know, it's very, um, you know, there are no second chances at, the, at this level once you... So it's it's going to be difficult. I think there's a there's a couple of gambles in there by by Gareth Southgate, and yeah, I'll, I'll offer my thoughts in a little bit more detail, and uh, maybe later in the show when we discuss uh, one or two other t- aspects of the squad. Yeah, ben, you make a good point about the injuries. We do this every tournament. Yeah, that's what there's I was going to say. Never goes well for us, does it? Wayne Rooney's done it. I think oh, Michael Owen, Beckham, Kane. We're just always just relying on one or two players who haven't had any any football. I've actually got a theory about why there are four right backs um and i think four right backs was trending on twitter earlier everybody was just like losing their losing their proverbials and i just think harry harry maguire is not gonna be fit therefore uh reese james and kyle walker will be used in that third center half slot which then frees that that point for trent to be included in the squad because that was that changed today i think the rhetoric on twitter throughout the day was that trent wasn't going to be in in the last minute he was and i think maybe they had, a, they had an update on harry Maguire, and that's why it's that's why we've got four right backs in the squad so we're going to be five at the back then you reckon oh uh, yeah i think well three yeah th- how you look at it, five or three at the back yeah i think yeah you're probably right i i, I saw the four right backs and just the worry is can Southgate actually make big calls? Because I, I was thinking, you know, all four of them have obviously got their merits. Trippier's won the league. You know, Walker's been so good at City. Trent, I think, definitely had to go, uh, like like Ben said. And James, you know, just won the Champions League. So it's a difficult decision, but it's almost like it's just the easy way. I'll just take them all, you know? And it's like, I just, I, I just can't really understand it. Like, when are we going to use all four of those players? I just think having a Lingard or a Watkins off the bench would have just been so much more... Especially powerful. now there's no Greenwood. Yeah, I know. I, 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 th- I think, I think it's a mistake to take four. I would rather we, we use the slot to take another attacking player, but I'm not England manager, so we'll see. Hopefully, hopefully, it'll prove me wrong. <laughs> right, essential picks for fan team. Right, well, I mean, where do we? I mean, the word essential is is a word that's you know banded around a lot with with the Premier League. Uh, every year, you know, you have these essential players, and you know, even some years people manage to win the whole thing without having you know, the, uh, Ben Crabtree won FPL without having any, any Liverpool players example when they won the league so i'm really interested to know what you both think like what the term essential means to you both um but also who is the first name on your fan team team sheet ben hit me romela lukaku mm. uh, you know we're looking at syria mvp uh so 24 goals 11 assists it's been outstanding and we're talking about a player who um you know will be coming into the tournament in excellent form uh you look at that group in belgium you would think you know, should breeze through that. They should score heavily. And, and when we're talking, when I'm thinking essential, I'm looking at players who will form the nucleus of my squad. There's two ways to play this game. You're going to be looking at, you're going to be effective ownership, you know, staying with, with some of the big hitters and then, you know, padding them out with a few differentials to hopefully clean that bit of an edge. But for me, it's got to be Lukaku. Yeah, I mean, some I look at some teams who don't have Lukaku, and I think, God, if anyone's going to hurt, <laughs> if anyone's going to kill your rank or you know your position before you know the first round's over, it's going to be him. Because I think we were talking about this um, a week or so ago when when we were saying you know the golden boots are often won in the group stage, so Lukaku's got to be one of the favourites for the golden boot. I mean, someone like Mbappe, 
uh, for France. Got such a tough, such a tough group. Lukaku does not have that problem. I think Kane doesn't have that problem. I think England should score goals in the group we've got um, as well. But Lukaku, for me, he's not going anywhere in, in my side. Jake, and just know what you think of uh, essential. So, what, when we say essential, what, what do you? What does that mean to well, you? Well, first of all, let's just caveat that the word essential. There's no such thing really, is there? Let's face it. But <clears throat> for the sake of the show and for the sake of the show's title and your question as we should probably carry on. Um, essential, <laughs> essential, essential picks for me, um, they've, they've sent, they basically fall into one of three categories. So I've got the first category down as like the premium assets. These are basically the best players playing for the best teams, playing for the tournament favourites. So they're likely to go deep into the competition, right? And then as a result, they're priced high and they're rightly so, they're priced yep. high by, by fan team. Fairly obvious, I mean, Benny mentioned Lukaku. I've got like Harry Kane, Mbappe, you just mentioned there as Lukaku, uh, Ronaldo. The list, there's, the list, there's options for us in this area. These players will be playing 90 minutes uh, throughout the tournament. You can rely Lewandowski on Lewandowski as well. Lewandowski, exactly. Mm-hmm. You can rely on these players. You know, they've got proven track records. And the, the, their best ability, actually, and Ben, you'll back me up, the best ability they've got is their availability. Like they're, they're rarely injured. Their first name on the team sheet, and that's essentially why they're so priced, so highly priced on on this game. Um, you'd have two or three of these in, in your squad, I suggest. The next category I've got is like this sort of talismanic asset, and this is my favourite type of player on the on on in fantasy sports. They're usually sort of used going for a mid mid level team, mm. um, but that's not necessarily a rule. The sporting definition of a talisman is someone who uh, represents and inspires a particular group. So. If you use the Premier League last season and as an example, we've got the likes of Callum Wilson at Newcastle, Jack Grealish at Villa, Zaha at Palace. And there's going to be plenty of examples too in, in the Euros. If you think of the, the Wales squad, you've got Gareth Bale. Yep. Maybe Aaron Ramsey fits into that too. Puki for Finland. Er- Ericsson for Denmark, right? So th- these are players that you know are going to be involved in the lion's share of their team's action. It's like, these are the players, they, they, might, they might lose their game 3-1 and they might come out of the game with... No, with, with having lost the match but they come away with fantasy points because that one goal they score they're either scoring or assisting it and that's what you want from these sort of talismanic style asset they're a little bit cheaper they're always involved in their in their club or their play in their countries like goings on in, on the field and the final cat- category i have is that value assets and it's probably a little bit more self-explanatory but these are the players that we perceive to be underpriced by fan team and therefore we can glean a little bit of value from them they have good output for the outlay that they cost and we can have a look at more of these in detail later on so to just to recap my, my three sort of my three sort of categories of players premium assets talismanic assets and value assets and as a rule if if, if a player doesn't fall into one of those categories don't pick them if a player falls into two of those categories, then that's when they could be classed finally as a central. Yeah, no, that's, that's, that's great. Uh, that's an excellent roundup. I mean, the, the premium assets is interesting because I think Ben touched on it with the effective ownership. You can only have a certain number of these players in your squad. So yeah. the absolute key decision that we've got is which ones do we get? <laughs> and often, you know, with these big teams, the kind of the, the big players are the strikers. And we have such a limited number of striker spots to choose from. So being you know, selective in, in those spots, I think is going to be key to us as doing well in this. Because if everyone's plucking for Mbappe and we think, well, that group is just too strong, that they, they, Mbappe isn't going to get enough goals in that group stage to justify his price tag. And then you look for, you know, other players. I mean, Lewandowski, for example, I mean, he's playing for Poland. So you might be put off by the fact he's not playing for one of these kind of like, you know, big, big nations. But their group is all right. And he is, he, he, his form is just like absolutely, I think a Bundesliga record for the amount of goals scored this yep. year and I mean he's been good in, in seasons before and it's like he's he's hit the absolute peak of his his form at kind of the perfect time going into it so yeah and, and I completely agree about the the budget assets as well because you want you want those players who you can put in your team and not have to worry about because they'll just tick over with points and just keep you know trickling points into your team and with the normal like FPL that, that we all play you have a much longer period for that to happen you, the, these guys need to hit form quickly because you can't be chasing people when you're after two or three weeks because you're just you're probably not going to make it up especially when the group stage is the stage when you'd expect the most points because the weakest teams are actually in the group yeah and that, that's a key difference between uh playing this game in, in the premier league than the euros is the amount mm-hmm. of teams there are available to pick from yeah you sort of know that the top four or the big six they call it in the premier league there's a lot more teams in this to look at 
just a lot more options for us. It's, it's, it can be fascinating. Yeah. So I, I, I wrote down four names for my kind of essential picks. Uh, I've got Kane and Lukaku, who we've mentioned, just because I think the groups are so... They're just there for them just to score a bucket load of goals in those. I've got Agreed. Alaba as well, listed as defender on fan team. First game against North Macedonia. Could be playing on the wing, could be playing in midfield. He's on set pieces. It's a good-looking game for Austria. North Macedonia are going to have to really surprise people to to make a dent in this group. Uh, and I've got Memphis Depay because obviously we've got these new the, some new rules now with fan team. Um, players get rewarded now for shooting essentially yeah. and I don't think there's any player that shoots more than him <laughs> he's a midfielder as well on the game I, I, I think yeah I'll, I'll talk about him a bit more later but I think he's he's going to be an absolute steal this year but De- Depay Depay's on free kicks penalties, on everything corners throw-ins yeah. he's on a lot so yeah I really like him he's he's at half time yeah, yeah, he's on. Yeah. <laughs> Sounding out the oranges at halftime as well. Yeah. Okay. So opposite of that, then. So we talked about essential players. What about the kind of reverse of that? So who are you avoiding? Who do you think kind of is a trap this year? Just to give you a couple of mine. I mean, I I wrote down a load of England players <laughs> because I mean, uh, Jack, you mentioned um, you know going five at the back or, or three at the back, or you want to call it for, for England. I just don't know who's going to play, and I think Foden could either be player of the tournament. Or barely see minutes, you know. And I look at players like Grealish, I look at Sterling, I look at Sancho. I just don't know how much these guys are going to play. And they're all expensive picks on Phantom. They're all nine million plus. I don't think I'd feel comfortable with any of those four in my team. So for me, the only player I'm really considering of England is is Kane. I don't know about you. What do you think, Jay? Yeah. So I would love to. I would love to have had Harry Maguire actually, um, if I knew he was going to be fit. I just don't think he will be. But I agree. I think. There's also you've got you've got the the, the the issue you mentioned with Foden. You've got that issue at left back between Shaw and Shearwell. Yep. You've got the issue at right back between <laughs> all, all of them. Five, all <laughs> of them exactly. Um, yeah, you're right. It's just, it's just too many variables there. If you get the right one, like you say, Foden could be the player of the tournament, or it mm. could be on the bench for for, for for those three games. I wonder if we can glean any inform- any information at all from the squad squad uh, numbers list from mm. from the England side. So I think Mount is. Uh, 19, which make, makes him out of that first 11. I know it's d- different these days with, with squad numbers. I just wonder if we can like glean some information. Like Jack Jack uh, Grealish is number seven. Does that mean he's going to be starting? We're such fantasy football players, aren't we? It's like big theory <laughs> all over again, trying to yeah. work out who's going to start. <laughs> Do you know what the biggest difficulty I've, I've had is, and, and what a, a lot of people seem to be basing their judgments on, is they're looking at this Euro 2020 qualifying campaign, looking at those competitive games, and then thinking, actually, this team done well there, this player done well. But we're 12, 13 months down the line. Mm. Things have changed a hell of a lot since then. I mean, for me, I, I like the look of, of, of Italy and, and coming off the back of that qualif- uh, qualifying campaign, 10 straight wins. Um, I think they're 25 unbeaten now. Uh, Mancini, the average age squad was 23, 24. And, and for me, we're 12, you know, we're another year older. That squad has developed the personnel has developed and they're only going to sort of get better from that. On the opposite side, I did like the look of Turkey and I've seen that defensive record. I think no teams conceded uh, fewer goals. I think they made it. Uh, and, but then you've seen how they, how they performed in, in the Nations League and, and Turkey have been consistently inconsistent. You know, their World Cup qualifying game, I think they turned over the Netherlands, 3-0, looked great. And there's question marks there. Just So for me, it, it's difficult to get a handle of, of where these international teams are at this precise moment because we just don't have all of that competitive data available that we did maybe 12 months ago from that so how, qualifying campaign. How are you using that, Ben? Are you, are you saying to kind of you know take that kind of information with a bit of a pinch of salt and not put too much onus in teams like Turkey and Italy who have impressed so much in qualifying or are you saying that there's other things that you can kind of look out for um, I, look, I, I think you know you, you you look at all of this information but you can't put all your eggs in one basket I think the Netherlands for example have, have, have changed managers 
since that you know that qualifying campaign so it's a, a change of style a change of tactics so if you're expecting that same you know dutch team to go out and perform the way they did in those qualifiers just isn't going to happen and again you know players are coming in and out of form we talk about um you know how they perform domestically you know players 12 months ago are probably coming off the back of a completely different season of of where they are now Jack Grealish probably was 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 one of the guys that you, you would say single handedly kept Aston Villa, you know, in the Premier League uh, project restart. But now, you know, again he's coming off the back of a, of an injury that caused him to miss, you know, over a third of this Premier League campaign. Mm. So yes, take that data, um, but certainly don't deal with it in isolation. Look at the bigger picture and 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 don't just you know purely because they've had this really strong qualifying campaign. You know, there's a lot of other metrics to sort of take into consideration. So who's, your, who's your trap then? If you're, if you're picking a player who's probably going to be quite highly owned, maybe playing for a big team, who's someone that you're not really considering for, for your own squad? Ooh, well, I'm with you. I, I, you know, I'm, I'm the eternal pessimist when it comes to England. <laughs> uh, I knew you were going to say that. <laughs> because we've, been, we've had our fingers burnt so many yeah. times. But when I'm looking at, at, at countries who I think maybe won't perform so well in this tournament, the two that really jump out for me would be the Netherlands and, and, and Germany. You know, and you cast your mind back, and I, and I know you, you, you default, you know, the Germans always come to the fore when it really matters. But but did they? You know, we've we seen them get absolutely smashed off mm. Brazil uh, in the World Cup. Was that a, was that a seven? Was it a seven one? Um, you know, when they, they really got turned over, you know, that German team just isn't what it used to be. They concede a lot of goals. Um, uh, yeah, I, I'm not expecting anything big from them. Yeah, I mean, I will touch upon it. I do want to give too much away because I know we, we'll have points later on in the show to bring up. So, But the, the, the Germans, the Netherlands and, and the Englands are the, are the three ones that I have concerns about, I would say. Jake, any players that you think... You know, just just won't do it. This this. I mean, one other name I wrote down was Bruno Fernandez. Like, off a really like dismal run of form for United. Not on penalties for Portugal. Nine million on fan team. I'm not going there. That's the one you mentioned. Not on penalties. The good thing is, I think that Bruno Fernandez will go will go into a lot of teams. And I think that exactly off the back of his performance, he's a United player. People wouldn't necessarily have done their research on penalties, and he'd probably go into a lot of teams. He won't be in my team. Um, not, not, nor will Cristiano Ronaldo. By the way, I don't know. I don't know if I trust Portugal. To be honest, it, 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 I don't really They've like how they, side. I don't really like how they play with um, with Ronaldo. I don't really like how any team plays these days with, with Ronaldo on the team. It's just all about that one player. Um, so I'm, I'm not, I'm not so, not so convinced of that. I don't like the look of like Morata. Uh, for Spain, I don't like the look of um, Eden or either the Hazards for for Belgium. In fact, mm. it's difficult now that De Bruyne is. I mean, Ben, you'll you'll give us a better, better update. Is De Bruyne out of the first game. Um, look, it's difficult to say. There's there's as with always on most injuries within the Premier League, we don't know the precise nature. Um, you know, I know Roberto Martinez said that he's come out. And he said he doesn't need surgery, which is a which is a good thing. Uh, we expect it. It's a, a blowout fracture, which is typically caused by, um, you know, high velocity uh, blunt trauma. So that's what we're reading in terms of because it's the orbital fracture, you know, the fracture of the eye socket and the nose. Looking at the database and, and no injuries are ever the same and no two players respond. Um, but looking at the limited data that we have for this type of injury, I think maybe one of the most recent was Gabriel Jesus. And that put him out for in and around a month. That would suggest that you know, if if De Bruyne was anywhere near that sort of timeline, that would put him maybe out of the, uh, out of those those group games. But we've seen players, you know, who've been potentially ruled out for months, but that does require surgical intervention. What I would say is it'll, a lot will be down to pain management and the probability that he'll need to wear some kind of protective face mask to cover that area. So you know, you'll question in that group stages where Belgium, you know, should really dominate is Roberto for me uh, Martinez is he um, you know risking De Bruyne in those games when really he should have enough strength and depth in his personnel in that squad to go out and get the result and then just keep you know Kevin for those knockout I can't see that any of those three teams troubling Belgium Denmark Finland Russia no. and, and and that's a concern so you're worried wait does he start maybe not if he does start 
does he play 90 minutes? No, he, you mm. know, if, if if Belgium are cruising, he's going to be the first one that, that Roberto Martinez is going to haul off. So for me, there's, 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 so he's that a, would be a concern. He's a hard avoid then, right? De Bruyne yeah, that. Um, yeah. I mean, I tell you, the other one who I sort of got suckered into is is Immobile from from Italy. His domestic form looks great, it, but he just doesn't transfer onto you know to the, the international mm. stage. Um, it, he's it's the same with quite a few of the Italians, isn't it? It is, and and it, you know his his data is inflated by penalties, but we know, or we were pretty certain that Jorginho is going to be on penalties for at least. Mm. So you know, and and if you look at their qualifying campaign, and I touched upon it before, they won ten straight games, twenty five unbeaten. I think they had nineteen different scorers during that qualifying campaign. The top scorer only only returned four. So when you're looking at some of their premium assets, I think Immobile is in and around that nine, that main million pound mark. It's it's hard to justify mm. spending that type of money on on players who are gonna be a little bit of, of a risky punt. On on Italy, um I mean, I'm representing who scored on, on this podcast, but I play these I play fantasy games by watching the football, watching the games and just knowing a player you just know that they're an asset in these type of games one of the one of the players i've watched recently um played for roma against manchester united in the in the year in the in the europa league a guy called lorenzo pellegrini that guy can play um he's, he's a greedy bugger as well he loves to, he loves to shoot um i just don't know if he'll be in the, in the starting lineup i really like him you just mentioned traps um and i think that the belgium defense might be a trap themselves. They've got good mm. record. In, I mean, qualifying is a long time ago. If you look at the qualifying, they, they conceded 0.3 goals in the, a, a per game across that period. It's the, the lowest. The fewest. Right? It's yeah. the lowest, yeah. If you look at that that defence, I just don't know, if, don't know if there's enough pace in it. We mentioned the, team they're, the teams they're playing, Finland, uh, Russia, Denmark, they're not going to trouble them really, but I do fancy them to score a goal. And so I just think the likes of Alderweireld, Murnier, uh, Castagna, they're going to be a little bit of a trap. They're I not think. quick they're not... teams, though. Those three, they're not particularly, true. They're not true. particularly um, fast. I think. I think they, if, they, they if, come unstuck later on. But I think in, in the groups, in, in, on, when Belgium will team. keep the ball well as well. Mm. But um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I just, I just think I'm, I'm, I haven't got any Belgians in Belgians in, in my. Uh, certainly not in my defence. Anyway, I, th- I think. I think a good question is, you know, when we're thinking about like teams to avoid, like in your own team, obviously the the top teams you you pick you pick teams who you don't think are going to do that well. So if you don't think Belgium are going to keep clean sheets, obviously don't pick any of the defenders. The flip side of that is then you look at like the lower ranked teams and you think, well, I definitely don't want any Scottish players, for example, because they conceded the most goals in, in qualifying. Um, yeah. I look at like Slovakia. I look at teams like Finland and I think, okay, North Macedonia. I don't want any of those players, but that kind of flips it on its head because then you think, actually, I want to target players playing against those sides. So I'm looking at Scotland and thinking, right, who was Scotland playing in their first game? Right, they're playing the Czech Republic. Suddenly, the likes of like Socek, yeah. uh, Sufal, you know, these guys then come into your in, into kind of consideration, especially when you've got so few games in these group stages to really target. It's kind of, you know, I wouldn't be considering any Czech Republic players normally, but the fact that they're playing Scotland makes you think there might be some goals in, in that match. But, Are you kind of thinking along those lines? Agreed on Scotland. I think um, we don't have the, the, the data on percentages yet of, of ownership, but I think... Andrew Robertson could be fairly mm. well owned, but he plays for Scotland. He doesn't play. For, this is this is Liverpool, you know. This is a Scotland are a bad football team, and I think England could go, you know, five or six against them. Really do. So, any final thoughts on uh, players or teams to avoid traps, Jake? I mean, just to continue my uh, hammering of Belgium, and I mentioned the uh, the the Hazard brothers earlier. Eden Hazard didn't compete. Um, didn't complete. 90 minutes once in last season for Real Madrid. So I think he's one to avoid for now anyway. If, if, he, if he hits the ground running, you can always bring him mm. in. And his brother's only got five goals and 33 for, for Belgium. So it's not as actually as prolific um, as, as we'd maybe like for, for this game. The um, price is too, too right? They're, they're, too, they're too expensive the game. They're, they're, mm. I think they're fifth and sixth most expensive players on, on this game. Uh, they just won't be for me at the beginning. Like, like I say, I think I would prefer to see Edin, Edin Hazard in my team, maybe on the third group game, if if I see they're just tanking everyone. Then that'll be the time I'll, I'll bring these in. But f- for, from, the, from the off, I won't be bringing these players in. 
pretty anti-Belgium, Jake. That's what I'm getting from this. No defence, no attackers. No De Bruyne. I, I wanted De Bruyne. I won't be having him because of his eye injury. I definitely have Lukaku because the guy just scores goals for fun. Um, I might go for Courtois, but that, that would be that'd be a silly decision considering I've just made the point about yeah. <laughs> uh, my fancy that they won't they won't this keep is, a clean sheet. This is the problem with doing these doing these like podcasts and stuff is you you kind of lock yourself into certain things. You can't go yeah. back on that now. If you if you end up with Courtois on your team, everyone's going to be like, oh, Jake, what are you doing? So yeah, just another question. So we touched on this a bit earlier. So obviously, like uh, I've not played fancy Euro um, before. To be honest, I haven't really played any of the international tournaments properly. I've kind of made a team, gave it one, forgotten about it, you know, kind of carried on. But this year is, you know, I'm really kind of into it. Uh, so what do you both think is the biggest difference, you know, playing one of these tournaments compared to playing the, the Premier League version, which a lot of people play? We mentioned earlier about, um, you know, the amount of teams in there. So 20, there's 24 games, I think, in like the first game week, which is massive. Um, any other big differences you think, Jake? What do we need to kind of keep our eye on? No, like I mentioned before, I think it's just the, the breadth of players we've got at our disposal um, is, the, is the big difference. I think that, that the key sort of learning from it is that go for players who you know is going to play 90 minutes, especially at the beginning. You do not want players who are sort of going to be sat on the bench. Mm -hmm. um, there's, there's not enough game weeks to make those mistakes up. So at the start, go a little bit safer. Go for players that are just nailed on. I mean, that's the word we use in, in, in fantasy football communities. If they're nailed on and you like them, then that, that's the player to bring in. Yeah, no, I think that's really good advice because like, like you say, you, you can get in a play on the fantasy Premier League. They don't start. You transfer them out. You've got another 38 weeks, 37 weeks, whatever yeah. it is to, to make it up. You've only, you really haven't got that long. What do you think, Ben? Are you, you, look, you must be looking forward to this, right? Premier League Absolutely not, man. I mean, I've been a, um, a, a very active member of the, the fan team community and the game for uh, probably about the last 18 months now. Won the um, money yet? Uh, yeah, I've, I've, I've probably hmm. cashed out, I would say, maybe uh, 30 to 40 percent of my entries. Uh, I'm still waiting for the big one. But, you know, it's, it's, it's a steady it. revenue stream, most definitely in there. And it definitely it suits my style of, of gaming because sometimes I get bored on those season long games. Um, and there's certainly, particularly when you're looking at the fan team monsters, there's the ability to pick those players that you would never entertain in a season long game because you're picking them for specific Absolutely. fixtures. You know, so you don't have to look too far in advance. Look at the next one and two games. And if you fancy those teams to get a result, then pinpoint players within, you know, those teams. And that that for me is is, is what really appeals. I love a differential. I, I, lo I love those opportunities to pick the players that ordinarily, you know, wouldn't get a look in. And that's I think it's a it's a definite shift in mindset from yeah picking your team in these types of formats as opposed to those who are, you know, those hardened maybe FPL season long players. You need to shift that focus and think very much short term and almost like, you know, and, and what I've noticed, the players that do well are, are able to, to do that. And if they do have a bad game, you know, there's opportunities for you to change that straight away. Mm. You know, you, you can remedy it so you don't have, you don't need to dwell on things it's it's your move forward it's fast it's frenetic you've got a big carrot at the end of it oh you're buzzing you for this aren't you oh, you're yeah. buzzing Look, i can tell yeah well, why not why not there's potentially you know there's some life changing money on the lane here so why wouldn't we be you know yeah riches riches for pennies <laughs> i think what i really like about it and, and i know a few people like in on, on in the kind of like fpl community aren't playing because they want to give themselves a bit of a break because you know we get so stressed about the fantasy premier league and you know our rank history is really important to us and all that and i'm just looking at this uh, at this fan team game and be like well this is just a bit like it's just a bit of fun right i can i can try different strategies i can do exactly what you just said ben i can bring in players that i probably wouldn't normally consider players who perform well for their countries who might not be look, look like shakiri for example you're never going to get shakiri in your fantasy team but you know playing for switzerland seven million why not i might have a bit of a punt on him go for it you know i, I kind of feel the opposite of that i feel like it's it's kind of re-energise me a little bit. I'm, I get excited about the Euros anyway in these international teams, but it's just given me that little bit of a lift up to the next next level. So It's yeah, funny, funny you. as you just say the word punt. I don't agree with that on this game. I think this, these, this, especially for this group stage, it's the time to pick the players that you just know are going to perform. And yeah, maybe Shakiri is not less of a punt for Switzerland as he is for Liverpool. Get those players who are going to play 90 minutes. You can sleep, you can sleep at night knowing you, you've got uh, a full Jay. team of players. The, the, the thing that I've always found though, with it, with the pricing 
structure of fan team, you're just not able to get all of those players into the team based on the budget. So therefore, you have to be a little bit creative on who to bring in. You have to do that little bit of research. And, and that's where it does throw up those, those sort of few differentials because, you know, the Lukaku's and the Canes and, you know, they're all high money premium assets. And, you know, we don't have an abundance of, of, of budget there available. Who, who are your bargains then? Who are my bargains? Well, I'll be looking at, I am looking at Turkey as potentially, particularly in defence. Maybe even one or two in that that Swiss back line as well. Ricardo Rodriguez. Well, he, yeah, so the veteran defender, I know he's at the fantasy stalwart. And, and, and particularly when you're looking at this new scoring matrix, he's a defender who loves to have a, have a pop at goal. Mm. You know, he might not always get the returns, but he could get the odd point. Uh, with that as well so those are, are, are a couple of the teams that I'm looking at I've got a Ukrainian midfielder on my guess. team you can uh, let me just try and say his name <laughs> yeah. correctly I was hoping I was hoping you'd interject so I wouldn't have to try and pronounce his name <laughs> is his name Ruslan Malinovsky it is indeed yeah, 5.5 million yeah. absolutely he's, he's, he's in my side it feels punty because um, I've not seen this guy play but um, I will watch him play before uh, before that first game kicks off but he'll be in. He'll be in my side. Plenty of assists and and goals this season. He's had a direct hand in fifteen of his last eleven appearances, actually, um, of the season. So, so really, ex- Mr. really exciting Mr. player. Jake saying I don't take any punts. Then <laughs> I know. Next sentence. <laughs> full of contradictions. Uh, and then and then, and then caught towards and goal. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Jake. Is this great? I mean, you know, I love it. I love people with different strategies. I like the fan team as well. I like that you can have multiple teams, right? Like you can, you know, I've got two teams. I've got one one team with quite kind of. Uh, core players, you know, a, a good side that looks like it yeah. could do well. And the other one, I've just gone a bit rogue, just stuck in a load of like random players. Some of them hit, you know, big points holes and, you know, that can that can propel me up the rank. So I like there's different ways to play it, just like there is. And the fact there is a smaller window means there is maybe more potential to get lucky with, with certain players really coming in. I think the, the rogue way uh, allows you to perhaps go and, win, and go and win it, whereas mm. that sort of the... the the uh, safer way, um, the, the Harry Kane's, the Courtois. Yeah, I won't be having Courtois, by the way. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, they they might get you into the top uh, and enough to to make your money back. For instance, mm. same with like normal FPL, right? Like if you want to, you can you can do you can finish in the top hundred k by probably playing quite safe. But if you really want to mm. push into that top hundred, you know, hundred and fifty is rubbish. Top hundred though, that's where <laughs> that's where you that's where you really want to be. Got to uh, be ahead of the probably, curve. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Uh, okay, so competition time. So, Jake, you mentioned earlier uh, we're giving away free entries uh, to the fan team game. So we're going to be doing a competition every one of these episodes that we do. Uh, so for the first giveaway, you just have to answer a trivia question correctly and just stick that answer in the comments section. We'll select one answer from random and we'll give you a free entry. So, Jake, what is our first trivia question? So it is an easy one to start with, but we will get harder across the series uh, the question is, which player scored the only goal in the Euro 2016 final? I know. Um, I know. Yeah, I know. Yeah, we, I'm sure everybody knows. <laughs> but it's, it, like I say, it'd be easy to start I'll start off with. It gets harder for the series. And as as mentioned, we'll select one right answer at random. And that person will get their fan team account credited with f- one free entry to this game. So we just mentioned about having multiple multiple teams. Perfect opportunity to try and get that. No cheating, no looking it up on on Google or Wikipedia. We won't know, but morally, you don't deserve the free entry if you get it right and win with that. So bear that in mind. Um, right, final uh, part. Uh, I think of the of the show predictions. So let's do these kind of let's rattle these off pretty quickly. Um, ben, I'll come to you first. I just want one name or one team, and just a quick a quick sentence of why you think that's going to be the case. So who's going to win it? <laughs> Gee, Easy question. It. <laughs> Belgium. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm going against everything Jake said. Um, I just Solid defence. Uh, look, I think they've, they've got, they've got the quality there. Um, and, and, and Lukaku, De Bruyne, even in the latter stages and, uh, Eden Hazard, you know, again, I disagree with Jake there. I think Eden Hazard has a lot to prove um, in terms of, you know, where he's been at Real Madrid. So it is a bit of a risky punt, but look, I like Belgium. Jake? Yeah, I, I've actually said France in a previous predictions thing I did, but I actually changed it to England because I'm blinded by Pratchettism. Yeah. <laughs> um, 
I, you know, ultimately, I think that England are probably going to go out in the quarters on penalties, find a way for it to be Portugal as well, I imagine. Um, but really, for me, this is the best chance England have had since '96. And um, what's crucial? How many think, times the, have we said that? <laughs> the, the depth, the depth in the squad is just is is what's going to, I, I guess, get us over the line. But for England, for me, blindly. Well, I'm going to say France, uh, just because they're. <laughs> they're so good <laughs> like the, the squad is just ridiculous I think we're not going to see the best of them in the group stage just because of how difficult their, their group is but what, they'll get through that I think and then we're going to see the likes of Mbappe Pogba just absolutely absolutely shine I think they're, they're the team that if I'm picking England not to face any team at any point in the competition it, it's got to be them um, they're, they're, they're just so strong all over the pitch uh, so top goal scorer I've said mine already which is Lukaku Ben I think you might have said the same yeah, I'll echo those. Lukaku. Yeah, Jake. I've gone for Harry Kane, and it'll be it will be between him and Lukaku. But yeah. I think I think Kane especially is is not afraid to stat pad in those games where we're already two and three up. You've seen it against Panama, like he just he's he's quite he's quite he's a bit of a bully, I think. Um, and we've got we've got an easy group. I mentioned it before about how bad Scotland are. I think that England will, will hammer Scotland, and, and Kane could could get two or three in that game. Flop. It's the biggest flop team. Come back to you, Jake, straight away. Okay, I've gone for I've gone for Germany. Of three yeah. reasons, they lost to North Macedonia in a group qualifier. That's unforgivable. I think the manager's on his way out. I don't know. If, I don't know if they they've really got their heart. His heart will be in it. Maybe it is, but I just can't see it. And then third one's Timo Werner can't hit a barn door. So, yeah, Ben, uh, England, England. <laughs> now, I, I actually think England will do quite well. Um, I think it may be a semi-final appearance, but I think the, the weight of expectation based on the squad and the strength, we should be going out to win that tournament. I just can't see us doing that. And for that reason, anything other than winning it is wow. a flop. You think a semi-final for England would be a, 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 a uh, flop? We've got, look, how many times have we been talking about England and going out and doing it and this, that and the other and play out here and play out, you know, it, it's almost... It, it, gets on me nerves. It's like the Brightons of this world. You talk about the Brightons and all the underlying stats are great and this, that and the other. How many times are you going to make excuses for them? There's got to be a point where you're just going, actually, you're just not that good. I don't care what the data says, you're just not that good. And England need to prove themselves. And the only way they can do that for me is to win this tournament. Nice. With, if, if you look at the England odds are five to one to win it, which is ridiculous compared to like, they're, they're the <laughs> no, same as France. No way. Yeah. It's just it, the reason the reason they are that price is because people are like myself blindly backing them. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I I wouldn't I'm, I, I would love them to win it. That's yeah. for sure. I mean, yeah. what a summer. I I, th- I think we do all right, but I I don't, I don't think we've got enough to to win it. Um, I I agree with you, Jake. I think Germany are going to be the ones that. that I I think they're going to get out of the group just because they're, you know, just because of of um, how poor uh, Hungary are, are going to be. I think poor old Hungary are just going to get slaughtered in that group, and I think Germany will make it through on that third place thing. But I think they'll come third in that group, and I don't think they'll they'll get going in the tournament and and just have an early exit. Uh, so you can soundbite that when they when they go on and win it um, for both of Indeed. us. Indeed, yeah. <laughs> There's plenty of soundbites from me, mate. Don't worry. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Yeah, building them up. Yeah, I hope someone's uh, keeping track. Um, so dark horse, I've gone for Turkey um, again. I think Ben and I rely on, on quite quite a lot of these. Uh, the lowest, you know, the lowest goals conceded in, in qualifying. They've got a really poor uh, ranking, which I don't think does justice to actually how good a team they are. Yilmaz up front. So Yilmaz is someone we haven't mentioned. Four point five million on fan team this is a guy who scored over 20 goals he's 36 years old but he is he is turkey like if they are going to do well in this tournament he is going to score goals and i think he is an absolute i mean i talk you talk about a steal you're talking yeah. about like an internationally like you know star player for a decent side at 4.5 so he's he's budget like he's sent he, for me he fits their style of play perfectly yeah 16 goals for lil uh, in league uh, took him to their their first title in over 10 years like you say 4.5 million he's definitely in my side he's a bargain it's not just club goals either he, he had a hat trick against the uh, Netherlands in in uh, in March too so he's on penalties he's definitely been in my side so do you agree with Turkey's a dark horse team or are you looking do you think no uh, one's t- gonna... Turkey's a good shout I've, uh, my 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 team was Ukraine maybe not the darkest mm. of horses given their qualification record I don't think 
they lost in their group. Again, it was a long, long time ago, but they got experience. Yarmolenko's experience head up top, um, and the wild card, the gem that is that is Malinowski. I think they could do well, and their, their group's not that difficult. Mm. Ben. Yeah, I, I like your turkey pick. Uh, the only concern for me is, is Gunas and, and, and just switching things up, overcomplicating things, um, almost akin to Pep in the big matches. The Champions League final was was a prime example of that. Um, just, you know, those big, and that would be the only worry for Turkey for me. But I've opted for Italy, um, you know, for reasons I sort of echoed earlier in this show. I think if it, a lot would be relying on getting a goal scorer like Emilile to to really click and bang, which he hasn't done. So you'd have to go against all his, 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 his data to do that. But if that happens and Marco Verratta has passed fit, I know he's struggling with a little bit of a knee injury at this moment in time, then, you know, I, I think they've got a lot of potential and, and potentially, you know, like I say, they could um, upset a few people. Did a, yep. did a similar thing happen in the 2018 at the World Cup? So Italy were being written off and then they just went on a, went on a good run. <laughs> 2018. Fucking hell, yeah! I can't even remember. Fuck, yesterday, man. We left it. Nah, it was in the world. I'm sure it was in the World Cup. Anyway, we can yeah. we can forget that question. <laughs> yeah, I like that. None of us know. Tumbleweed. They won it in 2006. 2006. <laughs> yeah. Scalacci yeah. was top scorer in 1990. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, so here's here's an interesting one. So we've talked about top goal scorer. Um, Lukaku came was the kind of consensus. What about the golden ball? So who is going to be the best player at, at the Euro tournament? I've got I've got mine. Uh, yeah, I'll talk about it in a sec. Ben, who have you gone for? There's a common theme with, with my picks, and I've went again. I'm going against Jay. He's going to hate me. Um, I just think Eden Hazard's got so much to prove. Wow. Um, and he, he hasn't That's got cool the minutes that. in his legs. So and and I particularly like Eden Hazard with the fact that. De Bruyne could be ruled out of those group stages. Um, you know, Roberto Martinez will want minutes on the pitch. He'll want to play himself in. If he can get that momentum, get that confidence, get playing again, have the belief of playing for a manager that, you know, really believes in him, then, you know, we've seen what Eden Hazard can do in, in his pomp. So, look, uh, yeah, I'm all it's over Belgium like a, uh, yeah, like a tramp on chips. Yeah, I mean, I, I like I've been. It. I spent the whole podcast saying get players who play ninety minutes, and then I reel off a stat that the guy hasn't played ninety minutes the whole of last season. Um, he will not be in my team. Uh, Good luck to I, you, Ben. I just think you know, in that it's an ideal opportunity for Martinez to get minutes in his leg in that group stages against the fodder mm. and play him into the tournament, and he comes to that knockout stage, and you're almost like, well, actually, you've got a player who's almost fully refreshed. And ready to kick on. Uh, look, the, it's a gamble with it. his fitness. He's, he's, you know, he's one of the best players I've ever seen play football. Like genuinely, you, you talk about Messi, Ronaldo. I mean, he was, he was reaching those levels. I think with with Chelsea until until his move. So I'd love Agreed. to see him have a have a, a barnstorm performance in, in the Euros. Jake, who do you think best player at the tournament? Um, this is one I'm less confident of. And again, is it is it blind? Um, it's basically. This is basically based on how much I like the player and how much I like watching him play, and that's um, Mason Mount. His technical ability and his tactical like abilities, they're so good to watch. I just he's got it all. I think he'll do well, and I think like Southgate really likes him, and I think I think he'll do well for England. And I, I think he could he could he could I step so. up to yeah. I think yeah. he could step up li- this time. I um, think he's champ- I- Champions League. By the way, yeah, I know. I, th- I think he's, I think he's of, of of the England sort of outside of Kane. I think he's definitely going to play. And he, he, he he's well. one of those that you say. I mean, I'm Jake, ninety minutes Gallagher. You're going to call me, but he he could be one of the guys who's going <laughs> to be be playing ninety minutes like every every single one of those uh, group games for sure. Yeah. So so my player isn't someone who I think is going to get ninety minutes, but I'm I'm more in hope that he does. I think if Phil Foden is given the chance to impress in this tournament, he will. And my biggest hope for England is that Southgate trusts him and plays him. He is the most talented English player I've seen. That's it. I think he's the most talented, you know, since like maybe like Wayne Rooney. His his ability to just dance around players and his his uh, vision and his everything he does is just class and he's so young, so I would love to see him on on the stage given the chance to impress. Will Southgate do it? 
I'm not convinced, but I've gone for him because, yeah, blinded by Patreon traders and maybe, but I'm I'm hopeful that he uh, he steps up. Um, okay, so last question and maybe the most crucial question for us winning some money is who is going to score the most points on fan team? Uh, I'll go first. I picked Memphis Depay because of that shot because I just think he's going to take so many shots that he's just going to absolutely clean up on the points. It just depends on how far the Netherlands go. I'm not entirely convinced they're going to go really deep into the tournament, but he's definitely going to be, he'll probably be my captain, to be honest, for, for at least at least the first week or maybe even two. Uh, Jake? Yeah, I like, the, I like the Depay shout. Um, he'll be in my team, so I'll be happy if that's, if that's the case. I, I've gone for Harry Kane for this one. Mm basically because we've got Scotland um, in that game. I think that, I just think, I really feel like it's, it's at Wembley. It, we're going to be so up for it. I'm going to the game. I've got a ticket. I'm lucky enough to have a ticket to that one. Um, Kane will be my captain for that one. Um, and I just I just think he, like he's, a, he's, he's a bully against these lower ranked teams and he's happy to stat pad. And, and I just, I've just got a good feeling for Harry Kane this time. So Jake, can I just confirm, winner England, a top goal scorer Kane, Correct. golden ball, uh, Mason Mount <laughs> okay. okay not at all biased then that's good <laughs> Ben do you, know, do you know, um one of my golden rules in, in, in other versions of uh, fantasy football is don't be blinded by the team you support and the club you support and I support <laughs> Manchester United so you know don't bring in Aaron Wabasaka for instance and yep. um, here I am Harry Kane England Mason Mount okay so Jake's not winning 200k that's good Ben Who's going to win um, well, you it? I mean, I had I had Mason Mount teed up as my, as my golden ball number two and my top point goal scorer, Harry Kane. Um, you know, I just looked at some of the underlying data um, pre and post injury, as I always do. And, you know, the suggestion when he came back from his latest ankle problem, um, you know, that he underperforms his data by as much as, as 40%, but he gradually sort of plays himself back in and inherently he, he often exceeds that. And we're seeing Harry Kane, who will have the opportunity to, to play himself into the tournament. So by the time that, that first game comes around, we should have Harry Kane in tip-top form. Mm. And, you know, that's going to be a threat for for any defence, not just the fodder of, of that group stage. You know, he's almost, I think he's that good. He, he transcends fixtures, teams, difficulties. Uh, he's going to be on spot kicks. You know, he's going to want to be playing 90 plus minutes every single game. You know, he's going to Check be on the ring. pitch. So oh, yes. I think, um, yeah, he's, he's yeah, Harry for me. Two Harry Canes and a Memphis to pie. Don't you just love fantasy euros so finally so i think we're going to do this at the end of every episode uh talk about some golden rules to follow when when picking your squad we've all played you know fantasy football for years so we should know a little bit about this uh jake you, you've got lots of these i understand so go on give me your give me your best one what's your golden rule for anyone I mean, playing fantasy for the first time i sort of give you one there about you know don't be blinded by your, the team you support but i am blinded by the team i support <laughs> so don't follow my advice but the, the one the one thing i would say is um have a little bit left over in your budget at, at the start um be a little <clears> bit more be trying try and be really frugal um and just have a little bit more budget so you've got a little bit of wiggle room and just just mm-hmm. in case that first squad you pick isn't uh, as good as you think it is um, or you get an injury, there might be a couple of injuries. You just have a little bit of wiggle room to play with and just a bit of flexibility around your squad. So I would say just leave a little bit of budget left, maybe that 0.5, yeah, nice. point, point 0.6, point 0.7, something like that. Ben, any top tips? Um, well, me and Jake have disagreed on a, on a lot of things during this this show, but one of the things I'd probably just go a little bit further is to say, when we're talking about players who can tolerate the demands of the game, players who are robust, not only can they complete 90 minutes, but they can perform at the highest level, game on games with quick turnarounds. So maybe, you know, I've went against my own advice and maybe taken a punt on Eden Hazard, but, you know, ultimately, if players are playing domestic football and they're showing that they can tolerate the demands of the game, game then you can you know pretty much be certain that they're going to be able to carry that across at the international level so maybe think about 
outside of the wider circle, outside of those singular games and, and plan accordingly because you do want to get caught out by, you know, managers, sort of resting players. Somebody that springs to mind, for example, could be somebody like Gareth Bale, who may be a popular pick, even though he is playing for Wales. You know, we've seen under Ryan Mason always referencing these ongoing calf mm. issues, niggles, complaints, where he doesn't quite feel 100%. And, you know, he's going to be a pivotal player for them, but he, he may not be risked. Uh, you know, for every minute of every match. So no Jordan Henderson for you then? But <laughs> well, Jordan's actually, uh, if you look at his load, um, you know, he, he he always picks up his injuries when he's had this, he meets a certain threshold. And that is a concern, but obviously getting him up to a level where he's going to be able to play consistently is, yeah. is going to be the concern between now and then. Yeah, my, my tip is, I, I just think the group stages are, like I said earlier, the group stage is where the goals are. So if there, ever there's a time to be aggressive in this game, I think it's attack. It's attack big teams playing some of the weaker nations. So the group of death is scary, but if you can bring in players and captain them against Hungary, for example, I think that's going to be a good a good strategy. North Macedonia, Finland, these guys should concede lots of goals. So that's going to be where I'm going to be looking to, to put my captaincy on. So I think that's it from this episode. Uh, thanks for listening uh, to Fan Team Daily by Who Scored. Please make sure you like and subscribe to our channel. Jake and Ben, thank you so much for joining me. Thank you. Thank there'll you. Be, there'll be more Phantom Euros content right up until the tournament kicks off. So join us for the rest of our shows. Uh, our next one's going to be on Friday, and we're going to look at the perfect fan team squad using who scored player rankings. So that will be very interesting. But from me, that's it. Thank you very much. You're watching Fan Team Daily, a podcast by whoscored.com.